Welcome to Quick Charge. It's November 21st, 2024, and I'm your host, Joe Boris. We're going to start today off with what might be the biggest news story of the week. Hyundai debuted its Ionic 9 with swivel center seats to turn your three-row SUV into a lounge. That was this week at the LA Auto Show. And the car is largely what we've expected. It's a large three-row SUV, much like the EV9, the Ionic 9's Kia cousin, but it also has some features we didn't expect. A little more clarity on that lounge-like interior we've heard about, which turns out to not just be marketing fluff at all. It actually is like a lounge, complete with Lazy Boy-style footrests and swiveling seats so you can face your friends the Ionic 9 ships with a excessively large 110.3 kilowatt hour battery. That extra 300 watt hours makes a big difference, offering up to 335 miles of range on the long range rear wheel drive model with 19 inch wheels. 20 and 21 inch wheels are also available, we imagine, with a lower range. The large battery will retain the eGMP platform's excellent DC charging performance with the ability to charge from 10 to 80% in 24 minutes, assuming you're connected to a capable charger. Hyundai says that's 350 kilowatts under optimal conditions. The long range model will have 160 kilowatt, that's 215 horsepower rear motor, and an additional 70 kilowatt, about 94 horsepower front motor if you get the all wheel drive model. Performance all wheel drive will be available with 160 kilowatt motors on both axles. Now, this is a great looking vehicle, but there's a couple of things I want to bring attention to right away. The first one being that this is going to be Hyundai's first EV to ship only with an NACS or Tesla charging connector. Now, don't get me wrong, the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6, those are also going to be available starting in 2025 with a NAX connector, but there are a ton of those that have been built over the last couple of years that have that CCS connector. The other one is right here by my head. Look at these seats. These are fully reclining captain's chairs. You've got that footrest here that comes, pops up there so you can be fully reclined and those will swivel back so people can use that third row, almost like a sofa scenario. And the people in those middle seats can have a conversation facing them. So if you're thinking about using this as an Uber vehicle, you're looking at Uber XL, you'll be able to pick up groups of people. They can have their conversations, leave you alone. And if you've got a bunch of kids on long trips, they can play board games facing each other as long as they don't get car sick and do that. So it's really interesting stuff. Curious to hear what you guys think about the new styling and the new interior design of this vehicle in the comments. The Ionic 9 is not the only news there. Kia has debuted the 2026 EV9 GT for when you and your seven friends need to get somewhere really, really fast. Again, this is also at the LA Auto Show this week. Similar concept to the Ionic 9. They're built on the same platform. This also gets the Nax charger. The EV9 GT was shown off this morning at the LA Auto Show with improved horsepower, zero to 60 time, and new electronic suspension the first time this has appeared on a Kia SUV. The EV9 GT ups the horsepower to 501. It's a big jump from 379 on the top spec GT line EV9. This is split into a 160 kilowatt motor in the front and 270 kilowatt motor in the rear. That's enough to push the big three row SUV from zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds down from five seconds on the current top spec EV9. Other performance improvements include an electronically controlled suspension, which allows for damper adjustment, making for a sportier or softer ride, depending on drive mode, larger front brakes to help manage that extra power, and an electronic limited slip differential for improved cornering at the edges of grip. Although it should be noted, 6,000 pound SUV, you're not going to be cornering all that much. In other Kia news, the 2025 EV6 has debuted here with, again, bigger battery, NACS port, and a fake gear shift. Perhaps the biggest headline feature is the larger battery, of course, with 63 kilowatt hour on the base model and 84 kilowatt hour on the larger battery, both about seven kilowatt hours more than the 2024 model. The 84 kilowatt hour battery now has an improved 2,700 pound towing capacity. Trim levels have been split from the base 63 kilowatt hour light rear wheel drive model. Trim levels have been split into the base 63 kilowatt hour light rear wheel drive model, three separate 84 kilowatt hour trim levels, each with a choice of rear wheel drive or all wheel drive and an all wheel drive only GT trim. The GT trim gets a 25 horsepower bump to 601 horsepower, though other models stay the same with 167 for the single motor small battery models, 225 for the rear wheel drive large battery models, and 320 for all-wheel drive large battery models. 
Now, while we're talking about Hyundai, Kia, even Genesis, all the Korean brands getting on that North American charging standard, talking up bigger batteries, Honda has some battery news of their own, and it might just be the most significant story of the week. Honda has unveiled an all-solid-state EV battery production line for the first time. Honda has been promising to unlock the power of solid-state batteries for several years now, and today we're getting our first look at the progress. Honda unveiled a demonstration production line as it continues to advance the promising new battery technology. Honda plans to launch electric models with the all-new solid-state battery tech in the second half of the 2020s, which, good news, kicks off in about 60 days. The new demo line replicates the processes required for mass production, covering around 295,000 square feet, and is already equipped with the tools to verify each production process, including weighing and mixing electrode materials, coating, and roll-pressing electrode assemblies. The line also supports the formation of cells, and the assembly of the module. The new facility was completed earlier this spring. All the equipment needed for verification is now in place. Honda plans to begin production on the new demo line in January of 2025 with a highly efficient production process and a wide range of use cases, including automobiles, motorcycles, and aircraft. Honda aims to slash battery costs while, of course, improving range and efficiency. To speed up development, Honda is conducting speedy research in two main areas, material specifications, and manufacturing methods. Ahead of its 2050 carbon neutrality target, Honda aims for 100% of global vehicle sales to be EV or fuel cell EV by 2040. Honda believes its new battery technology will be a differentiator in a growing, crowded market. Of course, we like to focus on EVs here. We're an EV channel, but there's so much more that you can do with a lithium ion battery that is not an EV. And that, of course, leads us to our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Blue Eddy, a leading provider of sustainable energy solutions specializing in portable power solutions, solar generators, and energy storage systems. As a provider of dependable and portable energy solutions, Blue Eddy has become an industry leader with a presence in over 100 countries that is trusted by millions of customers worldwide. Its portfolio of clean, portable energy solutions continues to grow, offering customers viable options for all uses and budgets. The solutions offer dependable power with plenty of plugs to connect devices. That portfolio includes the AC70, AC180, AC200L, and Bluetti's latest technology, the hands-free all-in-one backpack power stations. Now through November 28th, save up to 52% on Bluetti products during its exclusive Black Friday pre-sale event. Explore all the deals at BlueEddyPower.com and be sure to use promo code BLUEDDY5OFF or 5% off all power stations site-wide and click on the link in the YouTube description and the show notes below. Obviously very happy to have Blue Eddie as a sponsor. Great to have them here. And of course, they put a lot of batteries out there. So they're going to be excited and surely following the solid state technology quite closely. Moving on from them, the US EV industry is set for a huge boost as ExxonMobil and LG Chem have struck a record-setting lithium deal. Right now, the U.S. relies heavily on imports for lithium, but ExxonMobil's project aims to change that by providing a domestic supply, which could be a huge boost for U.S.-based EV battery production. Plus, the planned project will use direct lithium extraction technology, which ExxonMobil says will cut carbon emissions by about two-thirds compared to traditional hard rock mining. The LG Chem plant, which broke ground last December, is expected to produce 60,000 tons of cathode material each year, enough to support a lot of EVs. Its location in Tennessee is also ideal for quick deliveries to American manufacturers and easy import of raw materials, streamlining the entire supply chain for domestic EV production. The final go-ahead for ExxonMobil's lithium project will depend on regulatory approvals and other factors, but if everything falls into place, The partnership could help secure a more stable, low emissions lithium supply for U.S. automakers, which could be a big win for the industry. In February, LG Chem made a 10-year deal with General Motors to supply 500,000 tons of cathode material, enough to make about 5 million EVs. That contract will commence in 2026 when the factory is expected to come online and run until 2035. Finally, you know, we like to end these shows talking about the environment, talking about sustainability, talking about the grid. Today is no different. Minnesota's largest coal plant is going solar. Sherco Solar 
comes online. Xcel Energy has started delivering clean energy from one of America's largest solar farms, Sherco Solar in Minnesota. It's a major step in the utility's push to ditch coal and move to renewable energy across the Midwest. Sherco Solar, which recently began generating power, will eventually have a massive capacity of 710 megawatts. The first part of this project is already pumping 220 megawatts of affordable solar electricity into the grid, with the next two phases expected to go online in 2025 and 2026. The solar farm is being built on the site of the Sherburn County Generation Station, Minnesota's largest coal-fired power plant. XL Energy plans to retire all three of Sherco's coal units by 2030, with the first one already offline. Once fully operational, Sherco Solar will generate enough electricity to power about 150,000 homes, replacing a significant chunk of the coal power that's being phased out. The solar project is also making use of existing grid connections from the coal plant, which helps speed up the timeline and save money. With Sherco Solar, we're maximizing the benefits of the clean energy transition for our customers, said Ryan Long, president of XL Energy for Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Sherco Solar is creating 400 union construction jobs and 12 permanent jobs for ongoing operations and maintenance. Plus, it's set to bring about $350 million in economic benefits to the local community as the coal plants phase out. That's all we've got for November 21st. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you heard. And if you didn't like what you hear, be sure to let me know in the comments so I can tell you where to go.